Hi, my name's Shelley and I'm an illustrator. Um, I've been drawing for a very long time, um, ever since I was very, very small, because it was the one thing that I absolutely loved doing and it made me very happy and I didn't need to think about it. Um, I mainly copied what my mum did, because my mum used to draw and paint and I'd sit by her and I'd copy her drawings and then I started to do my own thing. Um, but uh, it's something that I've wanted to do for a very, very long time. Um, and I'm lucky enough to be able to earn a living from drawing pictures for other people. Um, now it's very strange me talking to a camera instead of being able to talk to people so apologies because <laughs> I find it this very very strange thing for me to do um, and apologies if I'm a bit sniffy because I've got hay fever at the minute and um, I'm not complaining about the weather being lovely outside but um, it's not great from my sneezing and my runny nose um, so <laughs> um, being an illustrator I've been illustrating now for about 20 years but not always for do, for books and publishing um, I started off illustrating commercially um, which means that I did a lot of drawings and, and, and um, for advertising um, campaigns um, I do it for uh, magazine advertising um, I used to do for any sort of marketing and then I decided I'd like to have a go at doing publishing which I'd never done before and that was about seven years ago now um, and that's when my publishing illustration journey started um, and I've not looked back and I absolutely love it um, I loved illustrating commercially but it's, it's a different um, different gratification from, from both of them. Um, when you illustrate commercially, it was, it was just, it was there and it, it disappeared very quickly and you were on to the next thing, you know, it, it, they, they had no longevity in it where the lovely thing about um, illustrating for, in children's books and in publishing is it is always there and it never disappears. And no matter how long ago you did a piece of work, there is always somebody who's coming up and um, finding those books and discovering your drawings again and you as if you did them yesterday and that was what's really satisfying about um, illustrating um, in the publishing industry. Um, so I want to tell you a bit about me but in order to help me um, tell you a bit more about me I've been sent some amazing questions um, which hopefully will stop me from waffling and will keep me on track and keep me focused on, on what I should be telling you and things that you might want to know. So, the first question I've got here is, um, did you know there was such a job as being a book illustrator when you were at school? And that's a really good question and um, I think the answer is no, I didn't. Um, I knew that I had some of my favourite books and they had some amazing drawings in that I used to try and copy when I was younger. Um, but I didn't actually know that that was a job that you could have and do as a, on its own. Um, I was lucky enough to um, have had author visits at my primary school. Um, and I remember very vividly meeting Helen Cresswell and meeting uh, Tony Ross. Um, and I admired their books greatly, but I didn't actually think about who drew pictures in their books or on their book covers. Um, I just thought that there was just authors. I didn't think that they were illustrators and especially Tony Ross because he drew his own pictures. So um, I, I never saw it as a separate thing, um, which is a shame because I wish I did. <laughs> um, well, um, skills, qualifications for being an illustrator. Well, I ended up going to um, 
art school. So I did my GCSE art, I did A-level art, and then I went and did a applied arts course, um, which wasn't a fine art based course um, or a graphic design course. It was more of a design and making course. So I thought that I wanted to be a furniture design maker. So that's the, the degree I did. And it wasn't until I came out of doing that degree that I realised that I, it was very tricky and difficult to be able to set up as a, as a furniture designer and that I had to try and look to use my skills elsewhere. Um, luckily, I had transferable skills, so I started working in a um, design studio in the retail industry and worked on projects for Christmas windows and um, retail interior design projects for, 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 for shops and stores. Um, and then from that, I ended up working for other people, just drawing, um, making videos, doing magazine work. Um, I suppose basically being a graphic designer even though I wasn't trained as a graphic designer. Um, and then I was working on one job and um, it was for a promo for BBC Three, for launch BBC Three. And one of the storyboard artists had commented on my drawing and said, oh, you should try getting yourself an illustration agent. Have you ever thought of being an illustrator? And I never thought of being an illustrator until that point. And from that person mentioning illustration to me, I looked at lots of other illustrators around and I thought, you know what, this could be something that I would love to do. Um, so I just went around trying to get work as an illustrator. I tried to get an agent, um, but wasn't very successful and mainly because I didn't have a, a, an extensive portfolio, illustration portfolio. Um, but I did get lots of good advice from the agents that I did see and from that I took on their advice and I did more work um, off my own back to fill my portfolio with new stuff and um, yeah, that's, that was the start of my illustration journey. Um, skills that you need besides being able to draw, you need to be very, very, very patient you need to be pig-headed. Um, you need to not give up easily um, because it, it is a long journey and a long path. And some people get to where they want to be very quickly and, and others, the majority of illustrators, I would presume, um, have to work very hard um, and work on jobs that they might not quite like and mix it up with jobs that they do like. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's to be in any, any sort of creative industry, you need to have determination to do it um, and not to take no for an answer. Okay. What was your first job and how has your career ended up to where you are now? Okay, so my first job, um, that is tricky because I've had lots of first jobs in different areas. I suppose my first illustration job um, was illustrating a style guide for Barbie. Um, that was really quite an unusual job. I didn't expect to get it. Um, I ended up having to do what we call a, um, a sample piece. So sometimes, um, people come to you and ask you to do a sample and it's usually a, a free thing but it's a potential of getting more work so you do the sample and you send it to them and you hope that something comes from it um, and this happened to me and I didn't know who the sample was for I was just asked if I would like to um, create something which I did and it turned out that the sample was for Mattel and they got back to me and um, I ended up from that little sample um, illustrating three style guides for, for Barbie. Um, and a style guide is creating all different elements from 
um, little graphic elements, um, flowers, uh, images, and then they get given to designers and they create fabric patterns and ways to use it with the with their logo and then that goes all over the world and then when they're creating um, merchandise for Barbie say they use those style guides um, as a starting point and um, so that was really good fun and um, my first publishing illustration job um, which doesn't seem it's so it's not that long ago, but it seems ages ago now, um, was this book. Let me show you this book here. It's called A Whisper of Wolves by Chris Humphrey. And um, I was asked to illustrate this book um, and to do chapter plates. Let's see if I can find one now. Let's find it. I'll find the opening one. There you go, there's one of the chapter plates. And there's 13 of these in this book. And I was commissioned to illustrate the whole series. So there's four books in this series. And I was so scared because I'd never illustrated a book before. It was my first time. I didn't know really what I was doing because illustrating a book was a different approach to anything else that I'd done before. Usually I'd do like a one-off piece and that was it. But um, having to deal with illustrating more than one image and the time frames that you got and the deadlines, it was all a whole huge learning curve for me. But it was the best experience because I had such a great um, art director who was mentoring me through the process um, and really sort of... Um, made me feel like I wasn't a newbie and really guided me and didn't was really kind to me as well because I was I was so nervous I was scared to send artwork when I finished it because I was scared about what they would say um which is very silly um but it was it was one of the best jobs that I've done this illustrating these books and I suppose this is what started me off on my um children's illustration journey really um, so that's the Whisper of Wolves. Um, <laughs> this one's a good one. Um, can you earn enough money to own a car, house, dog, go on holiday and to have a hamster? Well, I don't have a hamster. I've got two cats. Um, so, yes, you can earn enough money. Um, <laughs> I won't tell you how much I earn. Um, Working as a freelancer, it goes up and down depending on how good a year you have. Um, but you know, I've got two cats, two children, a car, a house. I go on holidays um, when I get a chance to. Um, so yes, you can make a good living out of being an illustrator. Um, though it is not a nine to five job, um, it is hard work and you've got to be have a lot of discipline. Um, so you've got to be able to say, like today, the sun's out and I'd love to go outside and just go for a walk and be in my garden. But you've got to focus and say, no, can't do that today. I have to do my work. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a job you work hard at and you can earn a living from. This one's... Do you get cross or frustrated or upset if an author doesn't like the book cover you've designed for their book? Um, <laughs> oh, that's a tricky one. Um, I get nervous um, because you illustration. The illustrator usually comes for me anyway. Um, I'm sort of the last part of the whole book journey, I suppose. Um, so I've not been on the author's book journey, so it's this is their baby. So I get very nervous when it comes, it gets to me, and I've got to then 
interpret their story. Um, if it's a book cover, you've got to interpret the story in one image. Um, if it's the whole book, you've got to be able to take it through the whole book. Um, I don't get upset. I can get um, frustrated sometimes because sometimes things change um, and not usually through my fault or even through the author's fault. It could be um, timescales change or um, you created an image to a brief that has been given to you and then it's been decided that they need to take a different direction because it's not working um, which doesn't mean that the illustration is bad or anything and um, it could be that just they've had a change of heart or a change of mind or they thought that actually something else would work um, that can be frustrating but that's part of the creative journey and um, you have to learn to take a step back because a lot of my communication that I have is through email so I, it's very rarely get a chance to meet anybody face to face and um, so I, I do take sorts of lots of deep breaths read the emails and the feedback I usually go away and have a biscuit and a cup of tea come back and then you know you can, you can see where the points are being made for your illustration and you just apply it you just you just work with it because even though I'm working on my own I'm still working as part of a team to create something um, so yes yeah, so I won't say I get angry um, touch wood I've not had many people not like the covers that I've done um, yeah it's always a first time <laughs> Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't get angry. It can be frustrating. I do get very, very nervous. But those are the my, those are the my main sort of feelings really about um, nobody likes it or something. Um, do you work entirely on the computer or with paper, painting material and painting materials? Um, no, I don't work entirely on the computer. Um, I do create um, my images through a process of drawing and painting and then mashing that up and, and scanning it all in. There's my trusty scanner here, I can't live without my scanner. Um, and then I take it into the computer and then I work on it. Um, and hopefully you will be able to see that process um, because um, later on in this video I'll have a little um, process of me taking you from start to the finish of um, a, a cover design that I have done um, and that will give you an idea of the process that I go through and um, so hopefully that will um, answer that question. Do you always work on your own or sometimes with someone else? Always on my own. Um, I work in my studio as you can see here this is my corner of my studio. I have my computer, my Wacom screen, my spare monitor. I've got my printer and my scanner. I've got my projects on the wall that I'm working on at the minute. I have my trolley full of my um, pens and pencils and things. I see That's my trolley, so it moves around my studio, follows me around. And um, I have an area of my studio where I paint um, and then I let everything dry and scan it in. Um, but I do all that by myself. Um, it's very rare that anybody comes in and I work with another person. Um, like I said before, I do work with a group of people, but usually they're on another um, in another country or in another place and my communication with them is by usually by email and um, where I send them work and they send me feedback back um, but that's yes mainly I work on my own and it can be quite lonely um, but uh, it's it's just one of those things working as an illustrator it's it's your work 
and your focus. Oh, how do you get work? Well, that's an interesting one. <laughs> Um, how do I get work? Well, I work as a freelancer, which means that I work for myself. Um, I am lucky enough to have an agent who um, I get work through. So if they have projects that come to them um, and they might think that I'm good for that project, they might forward that project onto me or put me forward for that project and I might have to produce a sample to the client to see whether I'm a good fit or not. Um, or there might be an occasion where somebody wants me in particular, they've looked at my portfolio and they've decided that they'd like to um, me for their, for their book project and they will go to my agent and my agent then will come to me and see if I'm free and available to be able to complete their, their work. Um, Sometimes people come to me direct. I've done a few jobs where people have come to me um, not through my agents. They've come to me because they know me from somebody else. and So a lot of word of mouth. Um, but I'm lucky enough to have, having worked in the industry for quite a long time, that um, I've got different avenues for work to come down. Um, and it's not just one. Um, so yes, that's, that's how I get my work. Do you let anyone else but you tidy your studio? Do you ever tidy it? <laughs> well, um, it's a bit tidy today because I did have a tidy to do this film, this little video. Um, but usually if I'm in the middle of lots of projects, because I usually have more than one going on, um, I'm very, very, very messy. and it frustrates my husband to no end because he shares the studio with me um, and I really don't like anybody tidying my mess until I've finished a project um, because that's it. I feel that's my creative process so I usually end up with lots of paper on the floor um, empty biscuits and crisp packets usually stuffed behind my, my screen um, lots of cups of tea um, I am. Um, I have usually my pencil um, dish is full of shavings and lots of um, small pencils because I've shaved them all right down and used them. Um, so yes, I am very very untidy, and um, I do tidy, but not that often, um, and I don't like anybody else tidying for me, as they might put something somewhere that I can't find them and that's very frustrating. What's the best thing about being an illustrator? And there's also here, what's the hardest thing about being an illustrator? Because I can answer both of those. Um, the best thing about being an illustrator is seeing people's faces when they open books and see your pictures. And that is the best feeling and the fact that your pictures are there forever. That book is always going to be there now and, and that's the, the, the best feeling in the world um, is to know that your work is always going to be in that book and nobody can ever take it away. Um, the hardest thing about being an illustrator is, oh, time, not having enough time to complete things. Um, Deadlines, managing deadlines, um, having to work late at night um, and weekends and some holidays, that's the toughest thing. Um, but you know, it's something, if you love doing it, you do it and it's, it's not that bad, but it is hard when you've got to um, manage projects and your, your time. What's the hardest thing to draw? What is the hardest thing to draw? Hands and feet. I struggle with hands and feet. Um, <laughs> it's getting, getting the, um, the perspective right on them and um, when you're doing figures. Um, I do 
find it very hard um, and I'm constantly scrolling through Google trying to find um, hands and feet that are in similar positions and sometimes when I can't find images of the hands and feet positions that I want I take photographs of my own or I take photographs of my children and they pose for me so I can have um, sort of a little guide of how hands should look. Um, yeah, so I have lots of pictures of my hands in various positions and my children's hands and feet in various positions, um, which is great. If you weren't an illustrator, what would you like to be? Um, ooh, if I wasn't an illustrator, I would like to be, there's a couple of things I'd like to be actually, I would love to be a carpenter and I'd love to make sort of um, fine furniture because that's what I sort of wanted to do when I did my degree is to be able to make furniture and I think I would, deep down I still would like to do that. Um, and the other thing that I would like to be is um, one of my other passions is I love to climb um, and I think I'd like to just spend my time climbing um, and be a climber. I don't think I could be a professional climber, but um, I would love to be able to teach people. I have a, I'm have qualified um, rock climbing instructor and um, to be able to teach people to climb and to be able to coach people, I think I would love to do that um, and because it means I could be outside a lot. And I will leave this best to last, really, I think. Um, what is the best piece of advice you could give to someone who wanted to go into book illustration? So, best piece of advice would be to persevere, be strong, learn how to take constructive criticism um, and not to take it too personally um, and to just go for it don't don't let anything hold you back um, don't let anybody tell you that you shouldn't be doing it uh, if you truly truly want to do it then you need to follow your heart and do it and Find people to give you good advice. I think that's the best thing that sort of I've had on my illustration journey is because I wasn't trained as an illustrator, I didn't go and do illustration. I suppose my journey might have been different because I might have known more and how to go about things. Um, but I think the best thing that's ha happened to me is having met fantastic people along the way uh, who have given me fantastic advice and listening to that advice and taking that advice and being flexible and being able to sort of move in different directions if you need to. If you work in a creative capacity, you've always got to be able to move sideways to get up. Um, and that's what, yeah, and don't give up. Um, if you love it, keep doing it and keep on drawing because drawing is the one thing that you're selling, you're selling your drawing. So keep doing it because the more you do, the better you get. Okay, it's um, great answering those questions. I hope my answers have been um, interesting and helpful. Um, the next bit of this video is going to be um, the process of me doing a book cover from start to finish. Um, and what you will see is, you'll see my mark making process um, and my painting. And then you'll see me putting together all those bits that I have painted and drawn and putting them into the computer and put, laying them up in the computer and, and working in Photoshop to put those together to make an image and hopefully by the end of it you'll have 
got the final image and the final book cover as well. Um, and hopefully that will help explain to you um, how I work. Okay, well, I hope you enjoy it. Um, so here's the process.